Terror Train action. Happy New Year's Eve, everybody. Today we're looking at the New Year's Eve horror movie called Terror Train. This movie came out in 1980 and it stars Jamie Lee Curtis. This is like her second or third movie after Halloween and Prom Night. Then she did this and The Fog and all kinds of stuff before she left horror to come back 20 years later. And then 40 years later. And then we'll see her again 60 years later. And so on and so forth. This movie has the interesting concept of having this college graduation party on New Year's Eve. And it's a costume party on a train. And so it's cold outside. So we got this claustrophobic setting. It's cold out. So they're going to die outside or die inside by the maniac who's on board killing people one by one. Very interesting concept. I love that concept. The claustrophobicness. Like I said. And the fact that. They'll just, there's a killer inside and they go, they can't go out because the train's moving. So I love that aspect. It kind of reminds me of like the thing. Sorry for making these weird comparisons and like plots for me. How could you? Hey, this is a classic in its own right. I think I can compare it. But just like in the thing, you can die inside the compound by the thing or you can die outside it by the cold. So it has a little comparison. So yeah. I think I'm right. One aspect of this movie that's different that I like is that this killer will ch it cha he changes his mask like three times, three or four times. He has a different mask because he has all these masks to choose from. He kills someone, takes that person's mask, kills this person, takes that person's mask. I found that to be very interesting. You don't see that too much in horror movies and I thought that was a fresh new take in this movie. I enjoyed seeing Jamie Lee Curtis in this movie. She's the only interesting character. Everybody else, they're this is not that interesting. Like, you don't really know who anybody is. You just kind of have that cliche boyfriend who's an, kind of a jerk. And he cheats on you just because a woman's, like, flirting with him. And he's, like, oh, like, all resistant at first. But then he kind of just caves in and cheats on her. And then we got this just asshole. Just the cliche characters. But they're just... Jamie Lee Curtis is the only good character in this movie. This movie has an interesting open and a very good third act. The third act is badass i like it as soon as jamie's alone with the killer in the train best part they do like this uh, uh bloody valentine ripoff where the killer he's had this, he has this big pole and he's constantly hitting the lights and knocking them out just like in my bloody valentine so i thought that was kind of cool even though it's kind of like a ripoff i think my bloody valentine came out before this the original and they did that right i haven't seen it in a long time i know the remake did it but yeah, we get David Copperfield in this movie and he's like the red herring. He's like the one where you're like, he's the killer, obviously. And but, you know, it turns out he's not. Spoiler. Seeing him do his magic, it's like watching a free magic show. I didn't have to pay any money except for, you know, the 10 bucks I spent on this movie. But it was interesting to see him in this movie. So yeah, he was a plus. But that kind of leads me into my negatives. And that's this is where the rest of this video is going. There's only two red herrings in this movie for me. Like I was like, all right. The killer is either David Copperfield or it's the guy who was pranked on, who got the prank at the beginning of the movie. And that's who it was. This movie just didn't flow well. It dragged. It's like a 97 minute movie, which means it's really like 90 to 92 minutes when you take away the way the credits at the end. But it still felt like it was two hours long. It, this movie could have been trimmed like five, ten minutes. Just... There's like, like there's scenes that feel like they're just thrown in. She's with somebody and then she's like not. And you're like, well, what happened to that guy? I thought you were following him back to the group. Now you're just sitting over here by yourself. What the fuck? I do find it oddly convenient that they decided to throw a costume party on New Year's Eve. I've never heard that concept, but it works conveniently for the killer. And that's why it's in here. So it's kind of annoying when you think about it. Like, yeah, that's why it's a costume party. It's just kind of annoying. It's lazy writing, in my opinion. For a th slasher whodunit... Like I said, the whodunit aspect isn't done that well. It's better than some, but it's still not done that well. And the slasher aspect of this movie is not good either. The kills in this movie, they're all off screen. Like, you don't see any, like, punctures, nothing. It's all, like, a guy walks in, he has a sword in him. This other guy, you don't see him, but then the next time you see him, he has a sword in him. This woman dies off camera, and the next time you see her, she has a slit throat. It's just, it's all the same thing, and it's annoying. Especially when this movie came out in 1980, so it's being filmed in 79, the same year that Friday the 13th was being filmed, and that movie was able to pull off so much shit. Did this movie have that small of a budget that they couldn't afford some practical effects? It was just very irritating. It was also very irritating. We got like these 50, 60 people, and no one sees Mo die in the middle of a magic show, like right next to them. Like, I guess what it was magic. Is that how they're going to explain it and write it off? Like, how the fuck did he get sliced, in, sliced up 
right next to his friend without anyone seeing it. It's just bullshit. I, I can't just be like, okay, I accept it. No, I don't accept it. Explain it to me. This weird moments in this movie, especially in the beginning when we're introduced to all the characters where it's trying to be funny, but not a single joke lands. It gets annoying. We got this one character who's just spitballing jokes that he thinks are that he thinks is funny, and it's just none of them land. But for some reason, everybody's laughing, and I'm just like, dude, you're a fucking idiot. Just die, die. And then he's the first one dead. I was like, yes, he's the first one dead. And the way they execute like this guy is you know, demise in the beginning. And then we later find out, like, no, he didn't die. He was hospitalized. Hospitalized for what? Okay, here's what happens, in case you haven't seen the movie. Spoilers. The guy, the killer, we find out later on, he's a magician too. So there's two magicians. He is getting, pr this prank is being done on him where they're putting him in bed with a corpse because one of these students, these college mates, is a doctor in training and he has this corpse that he steals and puts it on the bed and he doesn't even notice it walking in that room i guess it was very dark but we as the audience can clearly see that there's a rotting corpse on the bed but he can't until he's practically touching it because he's stupid but after he kisses or tries to caress this corpse and he sees that it's an old woman who's like falling apart torn up like she was just getting like you know, fuck, what's it called? Ah, autopsy. Like, she was just being autopsied on and then, like, just taken out. She's all ripped open. And he starts freaking out, but instead of just, like, running out of the room like a normal person, he stands up and starts spinning in the 360s. Ah. It's like, what are you doing? What's going on? And then, like, there's, like, this blanket just wrapping around and it's, like, smothering. He's turning into, like, a mummy. And then it just cuts to black and it's, like, terror train. I was like, okay, that's just stupid. What the fuck? And then that plays into, it comes into play later. Like, oh, something's coming into play later. Smart. No, it's stupid. They have him. He's like telling Jamie Lee Curtis at the end of the movie, like, kiss me. And then she goes, oh, I'll kiss you. And she does it. Because apparently she just knew that he was going to freak out, which he does. He gets up and does that same 360 bullshit. Ah! And he falls out the fucking train because apparently the door is just wide open. And he's, the guy comes with a fucking like shovel. Just Bam! Knocks him out of the train, and then he falls, hits the ice, and now he's dead. I like that there's not Evil Lives on Indy in this movie. Thank God for that. This is just one of those movies where walking into it, I was like, okay, I should like this. I should. It's a slasher. It's in the 80s. It's got Jamie Lee Curtis. There's a mass killer. I should like this, and I didn't. It wasn't as bad as Prom Night. That movie bored the shit out of me. This one bored me too, but I feel like the con the concept was there. It was it had a great setup. It could have been so much, much better. It could have. It could have been execu executed way much better. But instead, we just got like this conductor who just doesn't want to tell anybody that there's dead bodies until it's like almost too fucking late. And it's just, mm, it's just, it could have been done so much better. It's frustrating. This movie's just frustrating. If you're a slasher fan, sure, this might be worth a one-time watch. But overall... I hate to say it, but this movie, when it comes to Terror Train, to me, it was just wasted time. This is a movie where it'd probably be best just to look up death clips or something. Like, oh, death scenes. Well, like I said, they're all off camera. You're not going to see much. So, yeah, but just that third, the, the final, com the confrontation between them is good in the third act when he does the bloody Valentine thing. But that was like the only saving grace of this movie. So that's why I can't say go read a red box. No. Sorry, I just can't. But the Mr. Howard War, oddly enough, is going to go to the Jokester at the beginning. I don't know his name, but I enjoyed seeing him go. And yeah, just, it was interesting. Then he gets ran over by a train, so that's interesting. And the Mr. Twig Award is going to go to the Crocodile Guy. Jackson, I think, is his name. He gets his head smashed into the mirror. And then we don't know what happens after that, but he's dead. So make up whatever you want. Just... You got raped in the mouth. Maybe that's what happened. And those are my thoughts on Terror Train. Did you see this 1980 classic when you were a kid? Or are you my age and therefore you weren't born yet? And you saw this movie on YouTube or something? Let me know when you first saw this movie. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Let me know. And as always, you can support this video by clicking on this like button over here. And you can support this channel by clicking on my beautiful cartoon face in 5 seconds to see more. And until next time, Happy New Year's. Oh, 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 oh,